Hi everyone, welcome back to another Pre-Calculus 12 video. So today I'm going to do a shortened version of 4.2, solving radical equations. And you'll have this in your notes already, but here are some handy tips to make this a little bit easier to work through. Um, we're going to start with the first example, solve f of x equals root x minus 2. It says isolate the radical on one side of the equal sign. That's already done for us, it's already isolated. Raise both sides to a power that's equal to the index of the radical. So this is just like a 2 there, but we don't normally write it. So all that that's saying is, I'm going to rewrite it this way, y equals root x minus 2. So it's just telling us to square both sides in order to be able to get rid of it. And solve the non-radical equation. Okay, so y squared is equal to x minus 2 because squaring something that's square rooted is just gone. And if we're trying to solve this, we would actually make our zero, our y equal to 0 because that's how we would find the solution. So when we work our way through this, we end up getting that x is equal to 2. Solve the non-radical equation, so we've done that, and then check all solutions in the original equation and reject any extraneous solution. So that's basically any that don't work out when we plug it back in. So let's go ahead and check this. I mean, in this one, it's pretty straightforward. You can tell just by looking at it, but we can plug this in to see uh, when I plug it in, I should get zero. So two is what I'm plugging in for my x value here, minus two. Um, and so when I go to do this, I can see zero is equal to 2 minus 2 is 0, and I square root it, so I know it works. So this is my solution in this case. I'm also going to just compare it quickly with what the graph of this would look like. So we are going to solve this algebraically, but we also could sketch out a graph, um, just so you can see that these aren't two separate things that we're doing, it's actually the same thing whether we're solving algebraically, which is what we did here, or whether we're solving graphically. We know that a normal root x graph looks like this in its most basic form, but this is not normal. This has been transformed. It says root x minus two. We know that that shifts it two to the right according to our first chapter that we did on transformations. So our starting point, instead of it being at zero, it's actually slid over to and starts here. So the solution is always the point where y equals 0. So we know that that's our solution. And so from the graph, we can tell that it also is equal to x equals 2. So we get the same thing. It's just two different methods of looking at exactly the same thing um, and understanding that they, they represent exactly the same thing. It's just that when we have some equations that are a bit more complex than this, it may not be quite as straightforward um, or may not be quite as easy to graph it out and get it from the graph. Okay, so there's the first example. Let's take a look at another one that has a little bit more going on. So let's say we have f of x equals the root of 3 minus x and the whole thing is minus 1. So now when we go back to our little set of rules here, solve the equations with radicals and it gives us our steps here. Um, isolate the radical, so that actually is going to apply in this case, although it didn't in the last one. Um, we do need to do that first step of solving, I'm sorry, isolating the radical. So if I zoom in on this, um, the first thing that I want to do here is I want to, let's first start by just setting it equal to zero. So I know it's going to be root 3 minus x minus 1. I set the whole thing equal to zero, and then it tells me to isolate the radical, so I add 1. Sorry, that's not. I added 1. 1 equals root 3 
3 minus x. So I did that to get rid of this part. I add one to both sides, so it's gone. And at this point, it, the rest of this is just basic algebra. So if this is all square rooted, then I'm gonna square both sides. So that still just gives me one is equal to three minus x because um, square rooting something that's squared just cancels like this and this cancels out. And when I work my way through this, um, I would do 1 minus 3, so I'd get negative 2 equals negative x, but we don't want the negative, so 2 equals x when we divide both sides by negative 1. And then we always want to take this and also check to see if this is correct. The reason I say that is sometimes you get an answer in here, but when you go to plug it back in, you end up getting a negative under the root sign or the left side doesn't equal the right side. So that's why we plug it in to check to see if this is actually correct. So when we go to do that, we would say um, root 3 minus 2, and that's my solution I just got here that I'm plugging in, minus 1, that should equal to 0 if I've done this right. So just to be super clear, this 2 here is just me checking my solution that I've gotten here. So 3 minus 2, so this is just root 1, minus 1 equals 0. Root square root of 1 is just 1, so 1 minus 1 equals 0. Yeah, that works. So I can say yes, this definitely is the correct answer. So that's basically how we solve radical equations algebraically. I'm going to give you another example here. We have g of x, make that a bit thicker, g of x equals root x plus 12 minus x. I feel like that was too far away. Minus x. So you can see there's a little bit more going on here, um, but it's still the same approach as what I did above. So I want to start by setting this equal to zero because I know I'm looking for the solution. And then I'd have root x plus 12 minus x. Algebra is all about opposites. I'm trying to isolate the radical, so I'm going to add x to both sides. Maybe just for the video, I'll actually take the time to do it every single little step. But you can see that that gets rid of it here, and that's how I end up getting x equals the square root of x plus 12. In order to get rid of the root sign, we would square that side and that side. And so I get x squared equals x plus 12. Okay, and then if I'm trying to solve this, x squared minus x minus 12 equals zero. So I know that I have a quadratic equation here. I have x squared minus x minus 12, so I can't just isolate the x. I'm going to have to factor this in order to figure out what's going on here. So two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 1. So I know that this must be x minus 4 and x plus 3. Um, just going back to my factoring skills in order to do that. And from this, I can tell that my solution must be x equals 4. So if I plug in 4, then this will be 0. Thing would be zero or from this one it would be x equals negative three so it's a little bit different than what we had in the last question but we still need to take this i'm going to do this up here and we need to check both of them to see if there's any extraneous roots so extraneous roots are when they don't work out so let's go ahead and check this one first so i'm going to say root and instead of x, I'm going to plug in 4, and then plus 12, and then the whole thing would be minus 4. And I'm trying to see if this works out. So 0 equals 4 plus 12, so that's just going to be root 16 minus 4. Square root of 16 is 4, so 4 minus 4 does give us 0. So I can accept this as my solution. I still need to check the other one which is this minus three. So let's do that here. Zero, like that so you can tell the difference. 
zero equals, and when I go to plug this in, instead of x, I'm going to plug in that negative three plus 12. And then at the end here, I had, whoops, I'm just trying to get my color straight. So it would be minus x, but I'm plugging in a negative into it. So it's actually doing plus three instead. So I can see when I go to work my way through this, zero equals, this is just the root of nine, plus three. So that would be three. Square root of nine is three. Three plus three is six. So this doesn't work. So I would reject this, which means I'm not accepting that as a solution. This is the only one that I would accept as my solution. So you get to see an example of what that looks like and how that's going to unfold. And that gives you basically an overall idea of what 4.2 is about. So your homework is page 172, numbers 1 to 6, all. And stay tuned for another video coming shortly for 4.3.